let's take a look at another method of reasoning question. Here we have the questions I'm saying. The economist responds to the critic by, right, by. I'm not showing the answers, but all the answers start with verbs, right, by doing something. That's how you know we're in method of reasoning, descriptive territory. So here, the Elsa writers have explicitly separated the two arguments, right? They don't always do this. I think it's better when they explicitly separate it out. Just, I guess it's like one less thing we need to worry about, right? As opposed to just jumbling everything. I mean, economists could have been like, oh, some people criticize me and say that, and then, you know, fill in this, but, and then say what she wants to say, right? That just, it's an additional layer of processing. Anyway, so critic to the economist, in yet another of your bumbling forecasts, last year you predicted that this country's economy would go uh, soon go into recession if current economic policies were not changed. Instead, economic growth is even stronger this year. Okay, so what is this critic actually saying? Right, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use green to map out the critic's argument. Where is the conclusion? First of all. The conclusion is here. Your bumbling forecast that da, 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 all this stuff. Where's the premise? Right? It's it's this. So mapped out. Do you, do you see this conditional? Right? Map out the conclusion. Right? The conclusion is that your forecast is wrong or is bumbling. But what is the forecast? Well, last year you predicted that. Right? So everything after that is the prediction. Is the forecast, and you see it takes on this conditional, uh, conditional language. If current economic policies were not changed, then we will have a recession. Okay, this is the forecast. The critic says, instead, economic growth is even stronger this year, meaning we don't have a recession. We avoided a recession. So what? So the conclusion is that your forecast of, here I'll just map out what the forecast is again, of this is false, right? You're wrong. Okay, so I want you to see, before the economist calls out what's wrong with the critic, I just want you to think about this for a second, right? In fact, kind of don't, just see if you can avoid what the economist is saying. Think about this. What has the critic assumed in order for this argument to actually run through? In other words, if someone makes a prediction that A arrow B, how do you actually show that that's false? That this prediction or forecast of A arrow B is false. This is a callback to necessary assumption. Remember in that lesson where I talked about how to properly negate conditional claims. See, in a simplified version of this, let's say I predict that if you go to the movies, right, this is my prediction to you, if you go to the movies, you're going to have a good time. To show me that that prediction is false, you have to show me that you went to the movies and you didn't have a good time, then you get to conclude that, see, it's a false prediction that, right? Like the forecast or the prediction is that if you go to the movies, you'll have fun. If you actually want to say that, you know what? You're an idiot. You don't know what you're forecasting. You don't know what you're predicting. You just straight up don't know what you're talking about, right? If you want to show that this forecast, this prediction that is false, you have to show me that you went to the movies and what? And you didn't have fun. That's how you do it. Now you've made a really good argument. In fact, you made a valid argument. But notice the difference between this argument and this argument. Right? Notice, crucially, this piece is missing. Right? Like, it's, imagine if you said, well, hold on a second. You think, you predict that if I go to the movies, I'm going to have fun? Well, I didn't have any fun at all. Therefore, your forecast is wrong. I mean, I would be like, well, okay, did, did you go to the movies or didn't you go to the movies? You know what I mean? Like, in order to evaluate this argument, that's a crucial factor. Because on the one hand, look, if you went to the movies and you didn't have fun, okay, fine, that I admit, I was wrong. But if you didn't go to the movies and you didn't have fun, then you didn't prove anything, right? My forecast is what it is. Okay, so now let's turn to the economist's response. She says, there's nothing at all bumbling about my warning, right? So she says, uh, no, it's not false, right? My forecast, I'll just omit this, the forecast is not false. Right, there's nothing bumbling about my warning. That's her conclusion. Indeed, it convinced the country's leaders to change economic policies, which is what prevented a recession. Right, so what is her premise? She's saying, because I gave the forecast, it convinced leaders to precisely change economic policies. Right, They changed it. My forecast is that if you don't change, we're going to hit a recession. The leader said, okay, we believe you. We changed it. And are you surprised now that there was no recession? I mean, 
it's not a necessity, right? Some of you might be thinking, hold on a second, just because, right, just because you failed is sufficient doesn't mean you, right, no, no, there's nothing here about this being, she did, she's not saying, oh, we changed the policies and therefore we 100% necessarily would have avoided a recession. No, she's not saying that. She's just saying, look, we changed policies and in fact, it did prevent a recession. So you see, there's nothing false about my forecast. Okay, I think you probably have a decent handle on the argument. I wanted to show you question 16 because I want to show you how, and you've seen this before in other questions, but I want to show you how the outside writers are able to toggle up the difficulty in the answer choices, even if you have a decent understanding of the stimulus. Let's look at answer choice A, indicating that the state of affairs on which the economist's prediction was conditioned did not obtain. So when this answer choice first hits you, I'm wondering if it even made any contact, meaning like, did it just slide right past you? Because it's very abstract. This language is very abstract. The state of affairs on which the economist's prediction was conditioned did not obtain. First of all, without figuring out the referential part, just figure out the grammar part. Where is the subject? Okay, so, so just drop this, right? This is just indicating that, meaning the economist is doing something, right? That's the descriptive, like, I'm going to describe what you're doing, right? So of, of course, it, I mean, the economist indicates something, sure, right? But like, it's crucially important what the something is for us to do the descriptive accuracy evaluation, right? So I'm saying for the rest of this, do the grammar analysis. Where's the noun? Where's the verb predicate? Here's the noun. State of affairs on which the economist's prediction was conditioned, that kind of state of affairs. Here's the verb, did not obtain. So we're saying some state of affairs did not obtain. What state of affairs? State of affairs on which the economist's prediction was conditioned. What was the economist's prediction? That, right, you look at the forecast, that there will be a recession. Was this prediction, was this prediction of a recession, was it conditioned on some state of affairs? Well, the answer is yes. This prediction of a recession was precisely conditioned on the state of affairs of not changing economic policies. Did that obtain or did that not obtain? Meaning, do we not change economic policies or do we change economic policies? We changed economic policies. So, this state of affairs, you see, it did not obtain, right? It did not obtain. These two are different. Is that how the economist responds? By indicating that the state of affairs on which the prediction was conditioned, look, that state of affairs did not obtain. That's exactly right. Okay, so now I think you've, so we did a lot of stuff here, right? We did first grammar analysis to try to just figure out what the sentence was even saying. And then we weren't even done. We had to take all this abstract general language and map it onto the specifics of what they're actually talking about in the stimulus. That's why I say these questions are difficult. Even though reading through this, you might have a good understanding of what's going on, the outside writers have a way of describing what's going on in super abstract or removed language. And they do it in a way that, well, is intentionally hiding the fact that A is the right answer. Let's look at B, which says distinguishing between a prediction that has not yet turned out to be correct and one that has turned out to be incorrect. So here we're saying the economist is distinguishing between some X and some Y, right? Distinguishing between an X and a Y. What's the X? What's the Y? Well, the X is a prediction, modified grammar, right? Again, grammar, a prediction that has not yet turned out to be correct that's the X prediction. We're distinguishing that X prediction from one referential phrase prediction, right? From a prediction modified that has turned out to be incorrect. So B is saying, the economist responds by saying, hold on, critic, you got to make this distinction. On the one hand, we have a prediction whose correctness we're, we don't know yet, right? Because it hasn't yet turned out to be correct. We're still waiting to see the results. That's one kind of prediction. On the other hand, you have another prediction that turned out to be wrong. Those are two different predictions. Don't conflate the two, distinguish between the two. Okay, understanding that that's what B is saying, hopefully you can see that, well, that's not even close. Like, what are you talking about, B? What are you trying to describe? You're not describing the economist's argument. The economist doesn't say anything close to that. But the crucial point is that B is wrong here for 16, but B will be right for a different question down the road or was right for a previous question in a previous prep test, right? Because the economist could have said something like that, Right. I mean, this surely is one way to argue. If someone, if my opponent conflated a prediction that has yet turned out to be correct 
with a prediction that has turned out to be incorrect, well, I mean, that's a point of weakness. I'm, I can exploit that, and I can call them out by saying, hey, you need to distinguish between the two. But it just doesn't happen here. How about C? Attempting to show that the critic's statements are mutually inconsistent. Right? What does that mean? Is the economist attempting to show that the critic's statements are mutually inconsistent? Mutual inconsistency is the idea of contradiction. Meaning, you take the critic's statements, which are all over here, and you can just pull out what statements. I mean, here we, we in fact did map out the statements, right? And we're saying, look, there are at least two statements in here that stand in contradiction to each other. Okay, but that's not what the economist does. The economist doesn't say, well, you made this statement. You said, I forecasted that if the economic policies don't change, there will be a recession. And then later you said, I didn't make the forecast that da 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 da. Well, that would be attempting to show that you are you have statements that are mutually inconsistent. Do, do you see know what I mean? Like, like there's something internally contradictory about your claims. But that's not it. That's not how the economist responds. So C isn't right either. But again, bear in mind, a response to critics of you made mutually inconsistent or internally self-contradictory claims is an effective response. You will see this as the right answer choice in some future or previous LR question. D says, offering a particular counterexample to a general claim asserted by the critic. See, here it's almost like the roles are reversed. It's, it's, it's like the critic is the one that's stating some general claim. And the economist is like, hold on, I don't, I'm not so sure about your general claim. I'm going to give you a counterexample. Like, like if the critic said something like, in our country, for any given year, if the GDP doesn't grow by 3%, then unemployment will fall by 5%. The economist is like, are you sure about that? I remember it back in 2007. The GDP only grew by whatever, and then the economy. There will be a particular counterexample to a general claim asserted by the critic. If anything, it almost seems like it's the other way around. It's like the critic is trying to offer a counterexample to the economist's more general claim. But even then, I'm not sure how general it is, right? Because the claim was just about last year. The country would be in recession if, the, right, if policies were changed. But anyway, it's just really far off the mark. Right, but, but you can kind of see how we have to change things to, to make D the correct uh, answer choice. And, you know, again, just like what I've been saying about B and C, the other wrong answer choices, B and C, and E coming up as well, is that this will be the right answer choice, right, in a future question or has been the right answer choice in a past question. And lastly, answer choice E, offering evidence against one of the critic's factual premises. Now, this is a really attractive answer choice. It's not right, but it's I mean, I kind of want to say it's close to being right because what needed to change in order to make this right is pretty small. Okay, so the critics, note that the critic omitted a crucial piece of information, is, which is whether or not economic policies were in fact changed. Right, so let's alter this. Let's say the critic says the same thing here. And last year, another, you know, you predicted that, you forecasted that if the country's economy, would, if we didn't change policies, we'll go into recession. Uh, lo and behold, policies were not changed. Thank goodness nobody believed a crazy old economist. But look, and, right, and the country was fine. We didn't go into recession. Therefore, bumbling forecast, your false forecast, da 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 Okay, let's say the critics said that, all right? And, and, and this is the crucial bit that we're adding in, we're amending to. The, now, E will be right. The economists will be like, hold on a second. Were you in a coma for like nine months? Because we totally changed economic policies. And I mean, I mean, I guess to be, you have to offer some evidence that this happened, right? The uh, National Bureau of, of whatever, you know, reported this and that, and it was all because of my policy recommendation. So anyway, the upshot of which is that I'm countering one of your factual premises. You say our policies didn't change. You're wrong. Our policies did change. That's what E is contemplating. And this is why E is kind of attractive, is because it's, you know, like I said, unlike the other answer choices, E is fairly close. Like D was completely backwards, right? But E is actually kind of close. 